Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write the game engine from scratch. In the last video we set up the commands Q, command list and a set of command allocators to be used for multiple frame buffers in such a way that enables the CPU and GPU to work in parallel. However, because we have a limited number of frame buffers, we need to synchronize CPU and GPU. In this video I'll briefly explain the mechanism for this synchronization and then finish writing the code for work submission. In order to synchronize CPU and GPU, we can assign a number to each frame while recording commands. We call this number a fence value because we'll use a fence to communicate this number between GPU and CPU. The fence value is monotonically increased after each frame. Whenever the GPU has finished executing commands in a frame, it will signal the fence with that frame's fence value. The signaled value is called the completed fence value. When we want to start a new frame, we can compare the fence value of that frame with the completed fence value. If the frame's fence value is less than or equal to the completed fence value, that means that the GPU has finished executing the commands and we can continue and record new commands. If the frame's fence value is greater than the completed fence value, that means that the GPU has not executed the commands in this frame yet and we need to wait. In this case, we give the fence an event object and wait for that event to be triggered when the completed fence value equals the frame's fence value. Now we are ready to implement CPU-GPU synchronization in code. To synchronize the GPU and CPU, we need to know when the GPU has finished executing the command lists here. A command list queue has a function that will basically add an extra command at the end of all these command lists, which is to signal the CPU that it has finished working on these lists. When we call this signal function, a command will be added to the end of all the lists, and that command is to signal a fence that we can use to notify the CPU that this execute command list has finished working on the commands. So this function needs a pointer to ID3D12 fence interface. So we need a fence and also a fence value. I'm going to add them here as well. So before calling this function, we need to increase the fence value. I'm also going to add another field here that holds the fence value for this particular frame so that we can compare them later on when we are going to wait for the GPU. So if that fence value is smaller than the current fence value, that means that the GPU is further than this frame and that means that this frame has been finished. And that's why I give it the fence value that we just increased here. And then we need to write this wait function that takes a fence event. And a fence. And we need this event because if we need to wait for the GPU, we need to set an event. And when that event is signaled, it will notify the CPU and we can stop waiting. Here we set up the fence value for this fence at this frame and when we want to start working on that frame we need to compare the current fence value with the fence value of that frame. And if the fence value is less than this field 
That means that the GPU hasn't caught up yet with the frame and we need to wait. And therefore we can use an event to trigger whenever this value has been reached and we can wait for that event. Now we need to create the instances for fence event and the fence itself. For the initial value, we can either use fence value because we are still in the constructor, so the fence value is zero anyway, or just use zero. I'm going to use zero because why not? Again, if we fail, we jump to the end of the function and otherwise we give it a name. And now we can also create the fence event, which I need to add here first. This create event X is just a Win32 API function that we can call to create a Windows event. And if we succeeded in all of these, we just return. And otherwise, when we jump to this error label, it will try to release everything that might have been created. Here, where we call the wait function, we of course need to give it the correct parameters. Before releasing everything, we need to wait for GPU to finish all work on all frames. And therefore, I'm going to write a function that's called flush. And it flushes all the work that needs to be done on the GPU before releasing everything. And when all commands have been executed, we are ready to release. Here we release the fence, set the fence value to zero. And if we have a fence event, then we close it. Actually, this check is not needed because we have a fence event anyway. So let's remove it. And then we will release the command queue, command list, and all the command allocators by calling this release function. And next, I'd like to add some accessor functions to get a pointer to the command queue and the command list. I also added a function that gets the current frame index. So now we are basically finished, but I'd like to also tidy up things a bit. For example, we need a destructor that will check if everything has been released correctly. And finally, I can add an instance of this class to our list of variables in the core translation unit. Here, when we initialize directory D12, at the end, we need to also initialize the D3D12 command instance that we just added. This should be public, otherwise we can't access the constructor, obviously.
Here I'm using a placement new. That means that it's going to construct one instance of D3D12 command in the space that we reserved here. So this one will just use a default constructor and we can further initialize it by using this placement new to create a graphics command queue for us. This direct means that we can use it to do everything that has to do with graphics rendering. And here we can finally call the command begin frame and end frame. Now let's try and see if this builds. Okay, the first error that we get is that there is no default constructor. I'm also getting unresolved externals, and I don't know why that is, so I need to go and fix that first. So we have test renderer included. And obviously I need to move this to after we include the test renderer because test renderer also includes the test header, right? So otherwise these macro definitions wouldn't be known in the translation unit. Now that we are done, I would like to do one more thing. And that is to prevent this instance of D3D12 commands to be copied or moved in any way. So right now we can have multiple instances of this and we can assign them to each other and move them and do whatever we want with them. But since these instances contain naked pointers that we need to keep track of and release properly, I'm going to just disable copying and moving of this instance. That means that everything that we did here will be constructed in place and never copied or moved. As you can see, I put this class also locally here because I just want to use it here in this translation unit exclusively, at least for now. And therefore I'm going to just use a macro to delete the copy constructor, copy assignment operator, and also the move constructor and move assignment operator. So what this does is just basically, for example, in the case of copy constructor, it would do this. And it would do the same for the copy assignment operator, the move assignment operator, and the move constructor. And since we are going to have more classes that will delete their copy and move operators and copy and move constructors, I'm going to use a macro that I can use for that purpose. Here in common headers, I'll add some new macro definitions. Because some classes just want to disable copy and the others just want to disable move operations, I split this macro into two parts and we can use either of them to disable different kinds of operations. And finally, we also need to call release on this GFX command when we are shutting down the engine. Here we begin the frame and we can get the command list to record commands that we want. And after we are done recording the commands, we end the frame, which will execute the commands on the GPU and we can move on to the next frame. Now we can try to build and run the test and see if it works at all. Here we can see that we successfully created a command queue, three allocators, a command list, the fence and the main device.
if we look at our test here, we are not calling the render function, which doesn't really do anything, but anyway, we can try and call that. Now we are really calling the render function as well, so I can set a breakpoint here. And you can see that although it doesn't do anything, of course, it just opens the command lists and allocators for recording commands and then immediately tries to execute them, but it doesn't do anything because those command lists and allocators are empty. This concludes work submission to the GPU. In the next episode, we are going to look at GPU resources, resource views, and descriptor heaps. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.